Hey, this is Max. Welcome back to another CSR2 video. I am here with the Porsche Carrera GT. Uh, this is a legend car. I am going to give you the stage 6 effects of this car with this video. This car currently is not uh, really buffed like some of the other legend cars, although fully maxed, it is a little bit faster than what I've seen before, uh, although only slightly. Uh, and this is without any elite upgrades. Uh, obviously, if you elite the car, it's going to be even quicker. Let me take a look, make sure I'm talking the truth here. Uh, so as you can see, I have not had any additional fusions added through elite. Obviously, if you're fully elite, you're going to have a little bit of a difference in performance. However, I don't think the stage six effects generally will be um, a huge amount off from where it is. It's all going to kind of increase based on its overall effect. So talking about the car for, uh, first, fully maxed. This car fully maxed isn't very fast for a T5 car. In fact, the best I know I can squeeze out of it right now is about a 9.171. Uh, the good news, of course, is that it does beat Dino a little bit, uh, but very marginal. Um, it'll run like a 9.0 something on the 9.17 Dino. However, that is enough to put you in a position where this car potentially could be useful uh, in life. Now, I launched pretty badly there, so uh, let's disregard that particular uh, run there. It's probably not going to be as good. That only ran a 9.15. I'll do one more run just to, because um, I was thinking launch button when there is none, and I let go of the uh, needle a little too late there. So let's get a perfect, try to get a perfect launch here, uh, and get that 9.0 run out of it. Okay, here we go. So I'm using nitrous in third. Um, I haven't tested nitrous in second, to be honest. And I haven't really driven this car in quite a while, but uh, having finally obtained one of the last stage sixes, the car is now fully maxed, and that's good. And as you can see, a about a tenth quicker, uh, and probably more if you drive it properly, than what Dino says. And that's fine. 9.0 uh, range runs actually would be good for live racing. We'll deal with that at the end. Uh, I probably will have to tweak it to a 9.2 lobby and hopefully try to get still to run 9.0s. Now, that is fully maxed. Let's now put the car to stage 5 only and see what the overall drop in performance is. It's going to be a decent amount of drop. This car, unlike, say, uh, the buffed S7 or the buffed F1, um, well, the F1 really wasn't buffed, but the S7 was buffed and the Jaguar was ba uh, buffed as well. Both of those cars... Uh, drop very little performance between stage 6, full stage 6, fully maxed, and stage 5 only. Uh, whereas this car starts off pretty slow already, so it's probably going to get worse uh, by a decent amount. The other cars only had uh, something like a one second difference between stage 6 and stage 5. Let's see where this car ends up at. Now, it looks like you're going to need to do more aggressive final drive because, well, it's kind of tuned with a more aggressive grip. Let's see if more or less will be helpful. So 3.2 usually will get us in a decent position there. 11.1 from 9. So it's about a two second change. Um, again, I may be able to get a little more out of this car depending on how I tweak it. But let's just take a 11.1 as the stage 5 only uh, baseline as far as what we're going to do to compare it to the uh, runs of the individual stage 6s. So 11.121 will be the baseline unless I can squeeze one more point out of it, which I did. Oh no, a few more points out of it. Let me, let me, oh, there, there, we lost it. Right there. So let's go with 11.117. As the baseline, and let's take a look at the stage six effects. Starting off as usual with engine, we're going to go right to engine, put that stage six in, watch the changes. Oh, that's pretty substantial, actually. 
um, engine may actually be bigger than I originally expected. So that's a pretty decent jump uh, in both EVO and uh, PP points. So you're looking at 10.8 from 11.1. Is it a huge jump? No, but is it a jump nonetheless? It's a decent enough jump that it's worth looking into this. So 11, uh, 117 to a 10.865 for that. Let's take a run and see how the car uh, reacts now with just engine without some of the other stage sixes. I didn't run the car with full stage five. We'll take a look at that maybe at the end. All right, let's take a look here. I just want to see if it still beats Dino. And if so, how much it beats Dino by. Okay, so looks like we're still getting wheel spin in second gear, so third gear nitrous probably isn't a bad idea. And it ran a 10.7 on a 10.8 dyno, so again, uh, it's beating dyno by that little margin, uh, and it is relatively consistent margin, although I would say this is a little bit less than I beat dyno by fully maxed. All right, so that was engine. Let's go on to the next stage six. Okay, moving right along, we're gonna put engine back to stage five, and now let's talk about turbo. Putting turbo on adds very little performance points, but it does add a little bit of Evo. This is obviously not gonna be as uh, big a change as engine, but there's a little bit of effect there, probably marginal as compared to engine, but it does drop about a 10th, Right, so not quite. Let me see if I can tweak it into at least a tenth. It's not looking too good here for uh, getting beyond that 946 there. Yep, so I couldn't get 947, which probably would beat it by a tenth. Uh, Right now we're going from 11.117 to 11.020, a little bit less than a tenth here. So that is turbo. I'm not going to run that one uh, since it's not that much of an impact anyway. Let's take a look at the next stage six, and then we'll run the ones that have more of a bigger effect on things. So that moves us into the next one, which is intake. Let's take a look at that. Looking a lot like the way turbo changed, but that actually moved more than turbo. So there's a chance intake will actually outperform turbo in this case. Let's take a look. Oh yeah, intake actually is better than turbo. So let's tweak this slightly. So it doesn't look like it wants to go over 977 there without probably playing around with more combinations. Let's just go ahead and take this 10.948 from a 11.117 for intake, putting it ahead of turbo. All right, moving now to some of the ones that generally would have more impact, but uh, doesn't mean that they will. Let's take a look at nitrous and see how this car likes it. Okay, that's a decent jump, and that is also a decent jump. So that's looking a little bit like it's at least going to be as good as engine there, but we haven't even tuned it yet. So nitrous duration, probably going to be the best around here. Let's see. So it doesn't seem to make a huge change with duration changes. In fact, it's starting off right around, I think 1027 is probably gonna be the best range there. Okay, but what we will play with this and see if I can get that into the 1030s. Nope, doesn't look like it, 1027. That's a 10.810 dyno uh, from a 11.117. So this is a little bit better than engine. Let's take a test run on this one because it is nitrous. Let's see if nitrous can push the car further under dyno than say what engine was able to do. 
Okay, so again, trying to get a perfect launch. Let it ride out a little bit. Second gear, third gear nitrous. So obviously we have longer nitrous duration, more power. Um, it should do more, but it doesn't mean it will. Okay, so really not that much. If you think about it, we went from 865, I think, with the engine to about an 80 something. Here it's 809 to a 761, or 810, 809 to a 761. So it's not that impressive. Um, now, since I know there is a chance of, oh, 807 right there. Here we go. So I actually squeeze another point out. So 10.807 um, is the dyno we got from nitrous. However, it's not really pushing it that far under dyno with uh, nitrous only. So again, the max car right now still runs under dyno more than so far the individual stage sixes we've tested. Okay, so back here with nitrous and let's take a look at body. Again, watching the change. Ooh, that's a big change there. And it's a big, eh, well, that's going to be interesting to see if the performance point gains really can outperform the evil point gains on this one uh, because nitrous definitely had a little higher but then we haven't fine-tuned it uh, so there is a little more there and is there more here yes we can get a little more and it's always worth it to play with tire a little bit just to see now you can still get the 1014 here, 7 point, uh, 10 point, 10.727, and it's 1014 here, 7, uh, 10 10.727. So the question is, do I leave it here or here? Which one would be better? Um, since you're giving, given the same Evo, a uh, little bit less gives you slightly higher top speed at the sacrifice of slight bit of 0 to 60 versus 0 to 60 against slight top speed it's really not enough of an impact to make a difference here uh, but the, let's run it because this definitely has dropped more time than anything else so far so let's see what we can get when we actually run the car all right now i might get out of first gear a little bit quicker this time uh, and see if that makes a difference as far as overall performance that might be a little too quick a um, little laggy because it dropped second gear too far so that may hurt the time but take a look see how it goes 10.715 on a 10.727 dyno isn't that great um, i could probably get better run but let's move on to keep looking at the stage six effects rather than continuously running the car uh, we're going to run the car later anyway for other parts of the discussion okay so that was body. Now body has moved to the top over uh, nitrous, which is over engine. So body is number one right now. Let's take a look at tire and then trans, and we'll see what the order will ultimately be. Obviously, every one of these stage sixes seems to have done uh, some amount of change. So none is so useless as in some T5 cars where the stage six will do almost nothing for one stage six. So far, at least, it looks like most of them did something as far as increasing performance. Okay, now this one, the Evo point is not looking too great. And that's going to be a challenge to make better time. But it still moved because of that change, even with the lower Evo to a 10.853, putting it right between nitrous and engine. So it actually did pretty well there. Uh, so tire isn't as worthless as you may think. And with a little bit of a change on the grip, now we're down to 10.849. So it's doing pretty good actually. So tire uh, up there, not that bad because now we have at least three stage sixes that are kind of within a few hundreds of each other. So these are any one of these can be a substitute for another if you're just looking for that little bit of uh, effect without having all access to all stage six now and that brings us to the final stage six which is transmission 
So tire did pretty good. Let's see what trans will do. Oh, that's a big jump. And that's a decent jump. Oh, wow. Okay, so trans looks like it's got a nice jump on both ends. Usually bodes well for a performance change. Uh, Dino says without tweaking, 10.6. Wow, so trans just came in over body. Uh, now we have trans literally taking the top spot from body just like that 10.64 um let's see if i can do any better but probably not Ten point six four zero. a little more grip a little touch of aggressiveness on the dyno nope lost a little there so Looks like 10.640, unless this can tweak it. Oh, wait, I saw one point there, I think. Still 10.640. Okay, this being the fastest and most effective uh, stage six, let's take a run in it, see how this one plays out. So trans jumped to the top over body and nitrous, and then tire squeezed itself in there between nitrous and tie, uh, and engine. So we kind of have our order pretty much set up over here. Okay, let's see if this will play out to beat Dino by more than the other stage sixes we've tested, or it does not. Oh, and it looks like it definitely beat Dino a little bit. So again, this car basically beats Dino a little bit no matter what, 10.563 on a 10.64. Uh, Dino, it's about consistent with some of the others. So there you go. You now have your overall order of things with trans jumping to the top, body, nitrous, tire, engine, and then intake and turbo coming in last. Now, knowing that, knowing that the top three is body, nitrous, and trans, let's try again uh, to do the combinations where we run the best versus the worst. So this time I'm again gonna try two of the best against five of the worst because really none of them are really that bad. Um, except for turbo, of course, which is pretty low, but even turbo drops a tenth almost. So I'll have one that's completely worthless. Two of these, however, may drop the car uh, quite substantially, almost a second with two stage six. Maybe a little more there if you tune it. Maybe not, but we'll find out. Now, it's not quite a full second, right? It's 11.117 uh, to 10.245, a little bit less than a second, but still we're talking 10.245 with two stage sixes, uh, which is quite good. And then we'll put the other five in and probably still end up around 10, um, knowing that the other ones kind of balance out uh, the difference although because these are a little more balanced i think the other five will outperform these two unlike say um, the i8 or one of the other cars i recently tested where two stage sixes basically matched five other stage sixes so 10.2 dyno ran a 10.1 something on that run 10.175 while that is beat dyno, I have to tell you though, that doesn't make the car extremely competitive and live. The margin's not quite as good as I would prefer. Um, either slow the car down or speed the car up. You need to be at the edge of the lobby with this car uh, in order to be successful and live. But that was combination with top two. Let's do the combination with the rest. So we're gonna remove body and trans, but we're gonna put in the other five and test it that way. Okay, so going back and tuning. Looking at the Evo here, I think it'll definitely outperform the other two. So now the question is, can it outperform the other two by how much? Already we're looking at about two tenths difference between the five and the two, but understand again, you're talking about two stage six 
versus five stage sixes. All right, 10.040. Now, assuming again, this beats Dino, this could be a good spot uh, for live racing, but 10.0 Lobby really has a lot of 9.9 cars. And then 9.9 cars can really run 9.7s or 9.8s without getting bumped. So you're at the slow end in a sense of the lobby rather than a faster end. So I almost would prefer being in the 10-2 lobby running 10-0s than 10-0 lobby running 10-0s, okay? Of course, in 10-0 lobby, you wouldn't be running 10-0s. You should be running 9-something. Uh, but again, it's it, the margin there is that you could face 9-8 cars, and if you're not getting under 10-0 easily, probably not as good a combination to use for live. Plus, you have more performance points at less um, overall performance change. Therefore, it puts you in kind of a iffy uh, position for live. So that is the two combinations. Uh, let's now talk a little bit about getting some more out of this car, possibly for purpose of live racing. Now, for live racing, if you're not running a fully maxed, uh, for example, fully maxed, it's actually not in a bad position. Let's, in fact, put it to fully maxed um, because it's at 9.1, which is kind of middle of a lobby, but it's also very easy to get pushed one way or the other when you have that kind of a dyno 9.17. You could potentially match up to other 9 second, 9.2, 9.1, 9.3 cars, which means you have a good competitive position, or you could possibly match up to 8, 9, 8, 8 cars, in which case you would not be in a good position. That really goes to whether this car will um, have a good lobby or bad lobby matchmaking based on its PP points and EVO points. Having lower EVO points, more PP points means usually you don't lobby that favorably. So I have my concerns there. One of the ways to potentially get yourself a little better position is actually tweaking this below uh, the 9.2 range, like pushing it down to about a 9.2. I would generally want to put it to about 9.2 and change. 228 would be nice if I can kind of make that work. All right, notice how it got faster in that position, but then it, it'll drop down. So 9.226228, depending on how this car will actually run, um, let's not test run, let's just go to live and test it. Depending on how, how the car actually runs, 9.2 lobby with a 228 could put you either in the 9.2 and slower lobby or the 9.2 and faster lobby, but it's not a bad starting point in general as far as the lobby is concerned. It is um, an okay position, but understand with full 713 and lower EVO, you're going to face a lot of cars that actually isn't fully maxed, has much higher EVO, and can outrun you. Uh, and that's going to be the trick here, whether this car will hold its own uh, based on the high performance point, low EVO settings, which usually isn't favorable for matchmaking. You need to generally beat Dino by more in a situation like this, but we never know. Maybe it'll work. So here we go. Let's see how it goes. Not looking too good so far, and no. So matchmaking, because of the way the car is set up, it's fully maxed, uh, low points here, and I ran kind of poorly, I'm not going to do well here. So this is not a good uh, position to be in. Since I'm already in this lobby, and I know I'm facing 9-0 cars, let's see if I put it to the best tune, whether it would still put me in that same lobby. If it does, then I still have a slight chance of winning. If it puts me in a faster lobby with a tweak, uh, instead of keeping me in that lobby, then I'm going to be in trouble as far as using this car for live. Then the question will be, should I or shouldn't I put it in a situation where it can be more competitive based on a modification of parts? All right, let's see. I know I can do 9.17s. There we go. Okay. 
So let's just stick with that 9.177. Go back to live, test again to see if this car is going to actually match make okay, or I'm really going to have to run in the 11 or 10 second lobbies to try to be competitive. So again, the question is, do I get the same people or faster people? Hmm. Looks like different lobby, which generally means faster people. So again, the car's not matchmaking in a very competitive way. Let's just pick an opponent. I know this guy's car runs about 8.9s fully maxed. So and my car won't. So this is not a good um, lobby for me. And most likely his car is fully maxed and it is going to run 8.9s, which means I'm going to lose. <clears throat> but there's always hope. So let's give it a shot. All right, let's hope he did not crash. Okay, looks like it's good. This current situation is good. Um, I slowed down a little bit. Let's see what he ran. 9.59. Now, that might not be a correct run out of him. I don't think I've lucked out by making my dyno faster. I'm going to go into a slower lobby. Let's give it a shot with someone else, make sure. Uh, but again, if it is in fact facing cars in 9.3, 9.2 range, uh, because I lost that first race, that's a good thing. Uh, that means I'm actually going to be more competitive here. I'm not sure about that, though. I, I have a feeling that was not what people normally would run in here. Okay, let's try a Copo Camaro. Now, the Copo is a much faster car, so obviously in 9 second, this is a partially built Copo, or it's not running all its parts, depending on how and what the setup is. Let's see. I am still going to run all out, unless I'm well ahead by the end, which I am. So I'm going to slow down. All right. Interestingly, it looks like by tweaking this to 9.17s, I'm actually in a slower lobby. That could very well also be because I lost that first race coming in with a 9.2 dyno. So the computer kind of picked up on that. But I'm not complaining. So I just, I'm in a lobby right now that I just won two races. Um, and let's try more people because you really need to have four or five races with different cars, different opponents to kind of get a feel for the top end, bottom end of the cars that are running in here. Jesco is a great live car, so there's a good chance this is going to be an interesting race. Okay. Again, I'm pulling ahead, which is interesting, because the Jesco is one of those cars that pulls up. Wow, he almost, I think he did, oh, he did beat me. That was tight, but um, he got, see, that is what I was expecting this lobby to run at the minimum. Um, so I do have a chance to, oh, that's interesting. If he wants to beat me again, that means we had a double loss. On his screen, it was a loss. On my screen, I lost, but on his screen, he lost. Very interesting. Um, I've seen that multiple times. This is not unusual. So in his mind, he lost. That's why he challenged me again. And we had a really close race. So it's going to be interesting again to see where this goes. And this time, I'm definitely going to run it as best as I can. And that is going to be the 9.0 runs. 9.0 AO, he ran a 9.136 this time. So now, to him, I just beat him twice. But the truth is, we both lost the first one, and I only beat him once. Uh, but this is one of the bugs in live racing. You'll see it is what it is. I'm not too concerned about it. And I'm still in the same lobby, so no bumps yet. But as you can see, the, the variance in this lobby is, oh, now, now I may get bumped if I can't accept this. Um, if somebody else challenged me again, I see that. That usually should connect. That's the second time he's trying, and I can't get. All right. So that means 
I'm getting moved. Oh, no, I didn't get moved. Maybe he got moved. Let me see. Is he still there? Because I will challenge him back. Where are, you, where are you? I can't see the type of cards, and I don't remember the name. Oh, uh, it looks like that player got moved instead of me. Interesting. Okay. All right. Well, hey, sometimes that happens. It's nothing you can do about. All right. So let me take on one more card. Oh, perfect. I'll take on one more card. And th again, this is fully maxed. And in this lobby, at least, the Carrera GT s can win. I'm not saying it's going to always win or it's going to do great. Uh, but so far, it can win. And that's always a good thing. That little bit of a bump from the old time of 9.2 into this 9.0 range gave the Carrera GT, I think, a better posture and position in this near 9.0 lobby where it can be competitive. So this is very good. I'm, I'm quite happy about this. So that's the light racing end of this car. Can it do better with less parts and um, downgrade it slightly? I'm sure there are ways I can tweak the car, uh, but that's for a different discussion, a different video. So this is uh, stage six effects, the two verse five stage six, and a little bit of live racing to kind of show you that fully maxed because of where it falls on the dyno and the fact that it beats dyno, this car is viable for live, not great. Long term, probably lose more than it'll win in the long run, but you can always swap. Uh, as well. So once you elite it, it may actually end up being a little more competitive in some sense, depending on, again, where it falls in the lobby. So that is the review of the Carrera GT Stage 6 effects. Let me know if you have any questions or comments. Um, I always try to answer questions. If you like the video, please leave a like. Uh, if you like my videos and would like to see more videos or get notification when I put up new videos, please subscribe to the channel so you can get those notifications. As always, thank you for watching my videos. I'll catch you next time.